The chances of you liking Japanese food? Quite high. The chances of you having a cat named Sue? Quite low. We've covered both grounds with our chicken katsu curry. As with most foods from around the world, by the time they hit the British shores, they're not quite traditional. Today, our version of katsu curry, yes. we're going to take chicken breast, cover it in some dry crispy breadcrumbs and fry that off, and serve it with an amazing curry sauce that's really simple and a bit of rice, okay? To so start off with, we'll start with the sauce, so onion. Yep. You can take that and um, peel it and dice it. Um, we're dice. looking for quite a fine dice, but we will be blending it at the end anyway. And over this side, I'm going to do the same with the garlic. So one nice big clove you can just crush up and the same with some ginger. Now we hinted that this wouldn't be a traditional Japanese dish, but one of the restaurants in the UK that's really sort of been up and coming in the last few years is Wagamama's, and they've really made this dish popular. Yeah, we've had loads of requests for chicken katsu curry. Obviously it's kind of the one that you associate with Wagamama's mm. Japanese style curry, but one that has almost a chip shop sauce. You know when you go to chip shop and you have a curry sauce and your chips? Yeah. It's that kind of curry. Is that what it is? It's close to that as you can imagine. Wow. All of your onion. Yep. And go into this pan with a shot of oil. All that ginger and garlic. Nice. And the whole lot can start to sweat down. While we wait for those, we can look at our other spices. Now, this is, I say, the simplest curry sauce ever because we're just using curry powder. Okay, oh, so it's brilliant. already got all the blend of spices in there. This is the medium heat one. And flour. Okay, that's right. going to thicken our curry sauce. It's quite gloopy. And then the base of the sauce itself, chicken stock. Okay, so glass of water, hot water. And then if you can just crumble in half of that, we're only making about 250 mil. We know that's what the cup is, so it's nice and easy. We don't have to worry too much about measuring it out. Yeah. And if you can give that a good stir. We're going to make enough for about two portions here today, but if you are going to make a curry sauce like this, it's just as easy to make a big batch of it. It freezes really well. It keeps in the fridge for a couple of days. You can use it for other things as well. We can add our spices into the onions now, and at the same time, the flour. Okay, and that's going to start to form like a, a paste in there. Okay. And then no sooner is that in, we can start to add that stock a little bit at a time. It entirely depends how hot you like your curry. But you can also add a little pinch of crushed dried chilies. Okay, so they're going to go in there as well. And then a little bit of sweetness from some honey. So cool. a tablespoon of honey and soy sauce. Okay, so you wouldn't really normally sweet and sour thing going on. And if you think about curry, you wouldn't normally associate soy with curry, but obviously no. this is a Japanese style, so that's where you're going to have a tablespoon of that in there as well. And each time before adding more stock, make sure it's bubbling and boiling away and you've got no lumps of flour in there, okay? So it's a smooth sauce, with the exception of those onions. And while we're waiting for that, we can look at our chicken. Now, what we're going to do is take these chicken breasts and flatten them out. We want butterfly chicken. Right. Because we're going to flash fry these once they're coated. Yeah. So they're not too thick, okay? So keep your hand flat on top. Yep. So the knife is parallel to it and cut down through. Not all the way through to the back, but then you can open it up and you're left with something that looks like a butterfly, and it's then flat and even all over. So whereas chicken breast is normally a lot bigger on one side, yep. this is now nice and flat. So which bit of a butterfly does that look like, Ben? That it's looks this bit. No, this one's more of a heart, look. Oh. Now, like we've done with so many other recipes, we're going to panne the chicken. So same as you would do chicken goujons, chicken nuggets, fish fingers, all that same process. Yep. But we're going to use extra dry, crispy breadcrumbs. So traditionally, they would use panko breadcrumbs. Yeah. Okay, so it's a Japanese kind of breadcrumb. All we've done here is taken stale bread and put it through an oven for a few minutes. You can feel that it's really stale, crispy, crunchy yeah, breadcrumbs. Obviously, our flour. If you can just season that up, salt and pepper. Yep. And one egg will be enough just to bind this together. There we go. Now remember the order: flour, egg, breadcrumb. And if you can do that with our chicken, just as a whole, as a whole piece. As a whole piece. Bit. In fact, yep. if you put those on the plate, it might be a little bit easy for you. Or a nice, even coating of those crumbs. No doubt you'll make a bit of mess here, you usually do, but <laughs> the end result hopefully will be worth it. I haven't done anything. While you're doing that, I can also put some basmati rice into salted boiling water, okay, and that's just going to need about nine, ten minutes to cook off. I know in Asia they use a lot of rice cookers. Yes, if you've got one, that might be a lot easier for you to get hold of, but we haven't got one, so we're just going to use this. The more breadcrumb, the better. And for this, quite a lot of oil, because we're gonna, we do want to fry, we don't want a nice golden colour. As soon as you're happy that you've got hot enough oil, and you can always test that by grabbing a, a breadcrumb or something, just popping it in, and you should see it oh, just start up. to bubble. Okay, yeah. you don't want it too hot, because it will burn before you have a chance to cook the chicken all the way through. Lower that into the oil, always dropping away from you so there's no splash. Yep. So our chicken will need about four minutes on each side. I'll sauce some rice another eight minutes, and then we can come back. I'm hungry. So the final few stages of this dish. Smell that. Look at that can't sauce. Smell it, but I can. <laughs> Smells good, doesn't it? That smells good. Just want a portion of chips to put that over. No, I want chicken katsu curry then. Well, we'll add that too. Right, there we go. So a sauce, 
You can, of course, just serve it as it is. But yep. I think if we blend it up, get rid of all those oniony bits, it keep it nice and smooth. So if you can do that for us, Jay. Yeah. And while you're blitzing that up, we can do the finishing touch on our chicken. So a whole chicken breast, we're just going to cut now into strips. And this way, you can check right into that thickest part and make sure it's cooked all the way through. We don't need pink bits in our chicken. There we go. And the final step to drain our rice. The key here is now to plate it up in the way that we all know and love. So, Jamie, if we can pile some of our rice into there and pack it down. We want to make like a mound in the middle of the bowl. Oh, of course. And I'm going to take a few spring onions and just slice those up. You could put serve it with a salad or whatever, but I think just a simple bit of greenery. So our mound of rice onto the plate. Like yeah. so. We'll lift up our chicken, put the whole breast on there, already sliced. And the sauce, which you've blended beautifully. I have. Look at that now, smooth, glossy, so very, very tasty. And we'll put that over there like so. Oh, yes. You can have as much or as little as that as you like. Always good to put a little dipping sauce on the side so people have more. Some fresh spring onion. And there we go, it's our version of chicken katsu curry, sorted. I'm looking forward to this. Tell me how close it is. Restaurant dishes. Mm. How mm. close is that? That is pretty damn close. I think this is what I love about cooking. Going out to a restaurant, trying some food, coming home and being able to cook it. And there it is. There it is. Chicken katsu curry. Lovely. So you guys have asked for this a lot and we want to see you make it. Now Ben said earlier it's all about the presentation. So how is it going to look? Upload your pictures to Facebook. And don't forget to check out the website sortedfood.com. Plenty more curry recipes.